We are so prone to distractions, with one of the largest ones being in our pockets 90% of our day, sucking us from reality and the deep work that is necessary to grow. And your brain is wired to keep it that way. We strive for those quick and easy hits of dopamine because it's a lot easier to get distracted by somebody else's world than to truly understand and realize what's going on in yours. So what's the big deal of giving a little bit of attention to some of these apps? Let's look at some of the most common issues people struggle with and the three tips I use on how to conquer it. Attention residue. From the book Deep Work by Cal Newport, he talks about a study of a common effect called attention residue, which is how well you perform on a task while simultaneously switching between them. It showed that with each task, no matter how simple they were, there was always attention residue left over from the previous task, then causing a worse performance when doing the next task. In a work setting or maybe working towards your personal goals, even quick interactions with your cell phones, let's say a text or an email pops up, can cause this straight line of attention to be broken. All it takes is one second to get distracted. And when going back to the original task at hand, the back of your mind still may be thinking about how are you going to respond to the email or to the text message, thus breaking your focus even more and making it harder to actually be productive. Social media seems to be one of the most common distractions in today's society, not only breaking us from our focused work, but from the people close to you. Unrealistic influence. Have you ever been in a conversation with someone and then they pull out their phone and just start snapchatting or starting to look at random pictures on Instagram? Personally, I have seen two responses to this. One, you join them because you can't resist looking at the nonsense and having the fear of missing out on something that's not really there. Or two, you're kind of like me and think to yourself, hey, wait, I was just trying to have a connection and why did you go on Instagram in the middle of our conversation? Social media takes us away from the reality. The reality of the people sitting right in front of us. And it's kind of sad to watch. On the other hand, most people only post what they want you to see. They take time choosing the right angle, the right filter for the photo, and 99% of the time, people are posting images for impressing others or getting some sort of reaction from someone they haven't talked to since middle school. When there's such a big disconnection from reality, it's hard to define what a good life means to you. With too many different influences and different opinions, it's hard to form and shape our own values and filter through the useful and unuseful information based on your current values. So. How do we change this feeding frenzy on social media? Number one, reflection of our time. If you are not mindful towards your time, the time will not mind leaving you. Bad habits can be a real time sucker, especially addicting ones. To change your bad habits, you must understand what a bad habit is to you. Try to list out in detail everything that you do in a day and how much time you spent on it. It may not be 100% accurate to the 24 hours, but over the next week, just try to take note of what your routines are. And the one that is the most important is to track your cell phone usage. And this one's probably the easiest one to do because you can just go open the settings on your phone and search in cell phone usage or screen time. Now go through that list and compare it to your current goals and values. You will see a direct correlation of the tasks that are actually helping you get towards those goals and the ones that are pulling you away from them. A few tutorial or entertainment videos here and there doesn't hurt, but Getting sucked into the scrolling loop does not and will not benefit you. I have another video where I go more into detail about how I schedule my day, so I'll leave that in the description if you're interested. Another thing you can do is actually schedule in time for your cell phone, which I also mentioned in that video. That way I know exactly what I should be doing in that time period. And when it is time for social media or TV, that's when I indulge in mindlessly scrolling or binge watching a Netflix show. But the key is to not break your focus during the designated times of deep work. As you are working on different goals and projects, a question you can frequently ask yourself throughout the day is what I'm doing in this exact moment helping me towards my goals or is it taking away from them? Is it just a distraction? If the answer is no, then you can mark these as bad habits. Try to avoid them or schedule them better into your day. Number two, the principle of least resistance. The principle of least resistance as described in the book Deep Work is in a business setting without clear feedback on the impact of various behaviors to the bottom line, 
we will tend towards behaviors that are easiest in the moment. Now, the first half may sound a little bit confusing, but if you focus on the second part of that, where he says, we will tend towards behaviors that are easiest to us in the moment, you will notice this occurring in our lives more and more. Our brains are wired to do the easier task just for the sake of getting it done. Having a designated time to do, as Newport says, shallow work or the easier work will help you to better manage the time for your actual deep work sessions. The deep work Work tasks are those on the top of your list. They are the most important. Those are the tasks that help you take larger steps towards achieving your goals. If you notice yourself going towards the easier tasks, in order to build the mental muscle, try to challenge yourself to do the more difficult task first. Challenge yourself to do something uncomfortable every day. Build your mental resistance and discipline for when it really matters. If you don't take this seriously now, when the time comes, you're not going to be able to follow through because you have no discipline built up and you're going to look for the quickest way to get through something without looking at the quality that really matters. It's also important that you set up your environment so that you don't take the path of least resistance. Move your phone to a different room, turn it on silent, or even turn it off. Your brain will try to convince you to pick up your phone just for FOMO or the fear of missing out. But what you don't realize is that you're already missing out on a potentially greater life because of your distraction with your phone. Number three, Kaizen, small improvements. There's a Japanese philosophy known as Kaizen. Kai meaning change and Zen meaning Good. When the two are together, it can either mean good change, change for the better, and my favorite is continuous improvement. In the book One Small Step Can Change Your Life by Dr. Robert M., he talks about implementing Kaizen into our everyday lives to achieve greater goals. What he found most common was that sometimes our goals and tasks feel daunting to us, even the more simpler ones. To combat this, you start by breaking down your goals into smaller, actionable steps. Start with something so small that it doesn't even bother you. It may feel like a step back from the last step where I mentioned doing deep work, but when starting from nothing, it's better to improve by 1% every day than nothing at all. So instead of doing what the deep four hour work session that you see online, Try just 5, 10, or 15 minutes of you just setting a timer and getting those tasks done. Another quick example is that let's say you have a goal of doing 100 push-ups. You're not going to start by doing 100 push-ups. You're going to start off by doing one proper push-up, then move to 5 and maybe 10 the next week, then growing more and more comfortable and building your confidence within yourself. If you jump too deep into your goal, you're more likely to burn out and lose motivation to do it the next day. The key to this is to continuously improve and naturally build your confidence so that your motivation will improve with it. And if you're ever feeling too overwhelmed, try taking it back one step. Master the 10 push-ups so that you can do 20 push-ups properly. Nobody said making progress is going to be easy or motivating. So setting smaller stepped goals, like going from five push-ups to 10, may be more reasonable for the days where you don't feel like it. You can still follow through with the commitment of doing those push-ups. We are so prone to distractions with one of the largest ones being in our pockets 90% of our day, sucking us from reality and the deep work that is necessary to grow. By practicing and implementing all of these tips daily, you will start to break through the distraction and realize what is more important. Even with mindfulness and some boring but successful days, you can start to gain back your focus. Over time, you will start to feel the urge to pick up your phone decline. The more focus you have towards achieving your goals, the closer you are to achieving them. Don't let social media and distractions run your life. It's time to focus on what really matters. If you liked this video and the ideas in it, go check out some of my other videos. There's always the potential to learn more. With that being said, I will see you in the next video. Completely.